You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again. For the bi-weekly options extravaganza known as the Option Block, what the cool kids call the old OB. My name is Mark Longo. I will be your host, your guide, the drum major, leading you down the parade ground that is the options market. Of course, if you enjoy what you hear and you're on the on-demand side, all we ask is that you like and review it so more folks can continue to discover the movable options feast that is the Option Block. And of course... If you want to go above and beyond, you want to get additional shows like our Tuesday Pro Q&As, our Friday Options Oddities, you want to get entered into the drawings to win all kinds of fun and fabulous prizes, you want to join us live for this show, any other show you want throughout the week, you know where to go, theoptionsinsider.com, slash pro, or for the cool kids, slash secret club. (laughs) And let's see who's joining me on the old cool kids panel today. First... I am pleased to say he is joining us once again, and I'm also pleased to say that I saw him in person last week. He was on stage right next to me for our live vol views that we did. We're still, we still have the video. We put the audio up for you folks, listeners. We have the video. We're going to see if we can put that out for you on YouTube so you can see how the sausage is made behind the scenes. But I, of course, am talking about the one, the only, the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show, sir. It was a pleasure seeing you in person. I can now confirm that you do live, that you do exist. <laughs> I did. I was going to see I, I swear. I, we, I feel like we used to see each other every, like, six months. Yeah, every few years. months, probably, yeah. And then, and then the dreaded COVID came into being. Um, but no, it was great to see you. Uh, yeah, and it was a it was a lively group we had in Chicago. Um, uh, getting to get to see Mark and everybody again. Uh, both Marks. Uh, it was a good time. We had a, I think we had a good Volview show. We had a little. Uh, we had a guest star. I think Chris Chris Johnson from uh, Money Map. Um, nice guy. Uh, I have a good group over there. Uh, lively audience for sure. So yeah, all of- SPX traders in the audience. That surprised me. I thought for sure they'd be, you know, more of your spy <laughs> kind, but they all were all hardcore into SPX. Is that you're doing, Mr. Rock Lobster? Have you lured them to the uh, right side? He, I think you could blame Mark on that. He's Mark has taken the daily SPX trades and turned them into a, a thing of beauty. So, um, you know, just, you know, using like the fact that you have daily expiring options um, and you have a, you know, 30% underlying vol. I mean, you could get some action. <laughs> you know, remember in the old days, we didn't have expiration. We only had it once a month. Um, now you get it every day. So the 
let's just say I think this will be a blockbuster product. I I predict we will see them in like other equities. I know you you had dropped at the at the show live that it was a little harder for them to do the daily uh, the daily stuff on equities because of some settlement potential and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, they're terrified uh, but, of crunching the numbers on a daily basis on on equity options. <laughs> right. So, and I think, you know, it's it's a data problem, which I'm sure they'll hopefully be able to overcome. But, you know, but even the weeklies are so popular now. Um, so I, I would imagine them at least moving to three-day-a-weeks like Spy and some of the bigger names. Um, but why not? You know, why not? Because um, you got to... That is, I think it's a, it's the right thing. It, it gives you such incredible spreading opportunities. Um, really, just really good, fun stuff. So, um, yeah, so it was really nice. Uh, I, we had a good time and uh, and enjoyed the Volview show live. And I don't know about my Vol prognostication. I'm, I'm thinking that I was going to be, I'm going to be a little off. You were 29.52, um, I believe. Oh, ah, okay. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Much. I mean, we could be there in a few minutes. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, but the market's going up, which you, usually that's that's good for one of our uh, one of our favorite co-hosts um, when we have a little bit of a rally. So, yes, uh, we are delaying a little bit here at the top of the show, listeners, because uh, the one, the only uncle of Mike's has decided to be fashionably late, as always. Yes. He decided it wasn't cool. It was gauche to show up the same time as everybody else. So he said, you know what? I'm going to be a few minutes late so I can have the spotlight back on me. You know, the the prima donna that he is, Mr. Rock Lobster. I know, and then and there's always the moniker whenever we're late to the show. Usually, uh, the benevolent dictator says, "You're dead to me now, sir." So as soon as we cannot give him all the attention that he needs, we immediately become <laughs> you are just right. persona. No up. more use to me. But I heard, speaking of attention, I heard uh, the city, our fair city of Chicago, lavish some attention on you. Perhaps refused to let you go, sir. Yeah, they they uh, decided. Uh, let's see, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> To cancel all my flights. So you just hung out for three. What'd you do for three extra days in Chicago? Um, actually, I, I stayed with friends that I had, you know, that I've known for thirty years. So it was it was good to see them again. So I always see them when I go out out there. So it was a it was nice. Three was more days of deep again. dish. That's what you did. Basically, yeah. Actually, what's funny? It's funny you mentioned that because the first Friday night, I was like, oh man, you know, I was just so excited, like this, because I was in Chicago for a week to go home. So, of course, on Friday night, we went and we got a, um, a Lou Malnati <laughs> deep dish pizza, which which helped. It helped massage the, uh, the homesickness, I guess. <laughs> Can't get that in Maine. You know what else? You they cannot. Can, trust you know what else me. they cannot don't come get? Come here for the pizza. Don't do no. Do not. And according to Mark, don't go to Texas for anything pizza or Italian either. It doesn't sound like it's uh, it's too good down there either. But you know what you can't get in either of those spots, Mister Rock Lobster. It's the trading block. So let's get to it. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading, what is lighting up our tape here on this Thursday, May the 26th of the year of our Lord, 2022. And, you know, we're seeing a whole bunch of green back on the screen. GDP wasn't looking too good, but uh, consumer sentiment, people were actually out doing stuff and buying stuff in spite of the fact that inflation has just been punching them in the face left and right. <laughs> and so that kind of surprised some people. I think that's been uh, the key to a lot of the rally out there today. At the end of the day, you know the deal is, right? More buyers than sellers. Dow up nearly 2%, playing the laggard today, up about 1.9%. The S&P up over 2%, about 2.3%. And the NASDAQ up over 3%, 3.05%. So the, excuse me, the S&P back up over 4,000, 4,070 today. Will we hang out there for a while? I don't know. That's interesting. That's kind of the the question of the day. Dare I say it, the question of the week, which uh, this goes in line with what we're asking you right now, which is, of course, do you think we need a true a true pop in VIX to really get this concession moment, this breaking point in the market where we could say, OK, the sell off has kind of reached its apex. Now we can start coming in and buying again. And we have that question for you, it's live right now. Get over there at Options. It's been driving a lot of interesting and contentious debate on VolTwit throughout the week. So get in there. We shall discuss it later today and probably give the results, the final results tomorrow on Vol Views. But of course, speaking of Vol, all this green on the screen means most of our Vol friends 
taking a bit of a break. Vix Cash, when we kicked off the show, 27 and a half. That puts it down a little over one, about one and a quarter points from where it was this time last week. Still frothy, still elevated, but also not quite at the Rock Lobster's 29 and a half level that he was calling for for tomorrow. But again, two points, we could be there in a heartbeat. So 24 hours away is an eternity in the ball space. A uh, VVIX, this is interesting. I want to get your thoughts on this, Mr. Rock Lobster. VVIX, 96. Yes, you heard me right, listeners. 96, below 100. It's down nine points from our last show. This is the first time below 100 in over a year. In fact, I was just looking right before showtime. You have to go all the way back to pretty much April of last year, April 1st, to be precise, of 2021. That is the last time we were below 100 in VVIX. We flirted with it a few times in April, got down to 105, got down to looks like about 109 in December, got down to 106 in March. So we flirted with it and bounced away from it a few times, but we haven't broken it in quite some time. And then before that, you got to go all the way back to September of 2020. September 25th, to be precise, 99.64. That's the other time we broke 100 in VVIX. So this is a fairly rarefied thing. If you've been listening to, of course, Vol Views for a while, even this show for a while, you know, prior to the pandemic, that wasn't the case. VVIX kind of bounced around in this mostly 75 to about 125 range. And when it got to either one of those extremes, you know, it wasn't probably going to hang out there for too long. Then, of course, the pandemic happened and the range for VVIX changed demonstrably. We got up to, how had we get? 187 in VVIX on March 20th of 2020. So that kind of changed the game a little bit out there. And we were north of 100 pretty much ever since, except for a few times, including today. So that's intriguing. VXX, who knows what the hell Barclays is doing with it right now. 23, when we kicked off the show, down two points. UVXY was at a 15 even, down about three quarters of a point from Monday's show. SVXY at about 10 and three quarters, actually up about a quarter. Remember, S, excuse me, SVIX, I meant. That is, of course, the inverse VIX product. Uh, UVIX 18 and a quarter, so that's down a point. And VOLQ at about a 32 even, also down a point. So a lot to unpack there, Mr. Rock Lobster. A lot going on in the world of VOL. In fact, our, our favorite friends over there at Zero Hedge, a.k.a. the mouthpiece of of the Russian state. <laughs> they tweet about Vol every now and then. And they also tweeted out that over the past 15 years, there have been 36 daily sell-offs of 4% or more. And the VIX was never as low as, as it was on last Wednesday. They, they quoted Goldman Sachs saying that. That was, of course, the big sell-off we had last week. So it's kind of been a bit of a drumbeat out there, Mr. Rock Lobster, that we're seeing a lot of action out there in the markets and VIX not really responding. And now, of course, we have VIX below 100 for the first time in over a year. So uh, what's your thoughts on what we're seeing out there from a vol perspective, sir? Yeah, because uh, I, I thought if I was, like they said, we, we made kind of a market low, but we certainly didn't make a VIX high. Um, and that's, you know, and that's, you, you gotta, you've got to look at that and say, well, um, <laughs> why are we? By the way, Mr. Tusa is here. Uh, he's, he's, he's now... He's now begging to get in. He's going to wait now. He made us wait. So you know what? He's going to have to wait at least 35 minutes. I, I, think, that's, <laughs> I, think, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, but uh, SP, SPX made close to market lows, but VIX did not make highs. Uh, remember last week? It was like, oh, you know, this guy's falling. This guy's falling. And now, of course, what happened again? The Fed, Fed once again threw everybody the bone, right? So we made a market low last week and VIX did not make a high for the year. So what does that mean? Um, uh, one, one off, it means, does it mean um, that kind of the sell-off is over? Um, it, it's, I think potentially it means is the Fed does, according to their own uh, thing, their own um, uh, their own report, like we, we could we could pause our, our rate raising uh, in the future uh, if it's deemed sufficient to get done what they needed to get done. So and I think stocks are taking off on that. Uh, volatility is VIX volatility is extremely low um, for what I'm seeing. Like, OK, I bought some yesterday or earlier in the week. I dib dabbled and I'm going to buy more today, like from three to four o'clock today. Um, Cause if the markets really gets comfortable with kind of, okay, we're having these higher rate hikes. Um, VIX vol is cheap. And, um, 
in in both directions. So what's funny is as of this uh okay, so here's here's your quiz. Is there a bid for the VIX? Okay, and mind you that we are in zone four still. Um, is there a bid for the June 15, 20 puts in VIX? If you had to cast a cast a guess. 15, 20? So no, the the June expiring June fifteen. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, just a June ordinary. I thought, I thought there was uh, some strange foot. contract adjustment going on in VIX yes, that I was unaware uh, of. <laughs> just a confusion. Just a confusion. Is there a bid for them? Sure, they're a nickel bid. Why not? There are <laughs> all you wanted a nickel. So the market right now, with three weeks to go to expiration, is saying no chance in holy hecamony that we're going to get to a 20 VIX. Do we need now, to have a little a little wager going here for oddities or something? I don't know. Pick up some, I, I, pick up some nickel know. puts? I, I, I think, you know, like the 23 puts are a quarter. The 22 puts are a dime. Um, I find it um, I find it quite amazing, actually. Do a nice strangle so, like, and pick up like 23 puts and maybe some, uh, some 30 calls or something. And then you sit back yeah. and you say, come to me, VIX. Yeah, and I and I think there's a little that going on. I see some 26, 24 call spreads going up. I I think there is definitely a little bit of like you know this is kind of crazy, right? Um, so uh, from that point of view, like vol of all is coming down, and normally when VIX comes in, it's because people aren't buying the upside. And what I'm noticing, like uh, in the call spreads that I have on, kind of as a little hedge against puts, um, like. Even though the call spread has a long delta, it, the short calls are are getting crushed almost as much as the long calls are. So that's just a sign that they're just murdering the upside ball in VIX. So um, a, a big chunk of fear, I just think, has been lifted from the market. Uh, you know, NVIDIA doing a little better than everybody thought. Earnings probably didn't hurt. And, you know, and I guess just oil stocks are holding everything else up. So. At least for right now, you know, at least for right now, uh, we're we're, we're kind of off to the races. And, you know, we've seen how many of these, you know, two, two and a half percent moves uh, have we seen over the last, what, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, only to be sadly disappointed, you know, a day or two later. So if you have short term option trades, you're along the deltas. Mark closed the slew of stuff and all of them. <laughs> so many of the products that that we have at Option Pit today. Uh, cause we had, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, if they're going to give you all this money now, you got to take it. Uh, and I have just only a couple more spy call flies that I'm closing today as well. So they will be closed by three o'clock. Uh, and I'm happily taking the money I got, but, um, that's kind of the, that is, that is the deal, uh, with what we have. So we kind of have this, you know, I'd say it's a relief rally that the fed has kind of, and all of, all of the sell-off we've had is really, you know, over how aggressive the Fed's going to be, uh, you know, tightening everybody's word. They're going to tighten so much. They're going to throw the country into a huge recession. So it feels like a little bit of that language got walked back. That's what I would say on all that. But I'm, I'm anxious to see what the better late than never Mike Tusa has to say about all this. Oh, who wants to hear such nonsense? You know, we, we could wait. We could wait on that. But you're right. It is, uh, it is interesting. To see just the the madness or perhaps lack of madness that we're seeing. I talked about talked about VVIX being so low. In fact, here's a good indicator for you. Always joke about the cabbies and the hairdressers. Uh, Brian on OPR, he talks a lot of different strategies. He very rarely talks VIX. And he was even talking about VIX on his show this week. He was actually toying with looking at some VIX strangles before he finally settled on I think his trade for this week was a June, just a traditional June monthly 30 call in the VIX, which was around at the time, I think, 215 or something like that. Just a straight out of the money call purchase in VIX. You know, Brian is even getting lured to the dark side. And the primary reason he was looking at it because he liked VIX. VIX below 100 kind of triggered him. So, yeah, a lot of people are looking at VIX that don't traditionally look in that area anymore. And it's understandable. Things are getting, I think the technical term out there is wonky. Uh, speaking of wonky, he's the wonkiest of us all. He is the unclest of Mike's. I suppose I should be a charitable host and allow him to join us fashionably late as he is wont to do. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what is catching your eye in this non-Uncle Mike type of day? Or I should say Uncle Mike type of day. 
Yeah, I was going to say, did, are, are you looking at the, the charts upside down today or something? <laughs> Your tardiness threw me for a loop, sir. It is. I apologize for my tardiness. Uh, I had an unavoidable event, but uh, it's been dealt with, so uh, we're in good shape now. But with that being said, uh, a couple things that I'm seeing. Uh, the optimist in me, which uh, I think that's pretty much all I am, the optimist bull in me, uh, it's, I'm excited because of the fact that um, we actually, last Friday, uh, going into the close, we closed above the 3900 level. And I thought that was a pretty good thing, just the fact that like the last 40 minutes of the day, the market just took off. I thought that was a bullish thing. Monday, markets continued. Then we had a big sell-off on Tuesday, but we still closed about where we opened. It was still down overall, but we closed where we opened. Yesterday, we had a little bit of a rally, and then today we're having a pretty big rally. Uh, I think that the next point on of resistance, uh, we were at 4090 on May 17th, so uh, a little over a week ago. Uh, that was the high, and the close was 4088. So I'd like to see us close above those levels. Now, of course, the next one above that is the kind of the key number uh, based on the, the round number, that would be 4,100. Uh, so I, I'd like, it would really make me feel even more optimistic uh, if we could close above the 4,100 level today. We could do it, uh, but uh, we still would have another roughly 38 points to go and roughly 26 points to go off of the high of the day. But um, uh, as an indicator, if we talk this market up enough on the option block, we can make it go up by gosh. Uh, just kidding, of course. So seeing that, uh, a lot of talk going on as to where things are. And um, with the multiples, the multiples haven't changed as to what Andrew was talking about, I believe, last week. Nothing's really changed along those lines. But here's what we have seen in the marketplace. We've come 20% off of the all-time highs. We did that last Friday, and then the market bounced from there. So we have experienced the bear market, but it did not last for more than just um, – maybe about an hour, I would say. I just, I forget what the price action was on Friday exactly, but it did not last very long. So we're above the bear market level. And so I believe that's something that uh, had buyers come in. Uh, the other thing that I think is good for today right now is we're above the 4,000 level in the SPX. That's another good thing. The other things with which I'm noticing right now uh, is the fact that we do have a relatively flat 10-year uh, note on the day today. Uh, corporates, looking at LQD, that's up slightly on the day. Uh, so we're not getting a ton of movement in the bond world. So there's no exact rush to risk uh, coming out of bonds, but uh, we are getting a little bit of movement. Uh, silver is flat on the day. And then uh, I think the thing that we need to continue to watch, of course, is oil. Uh, oil is up to 114 at this stage. So we're definitely getting some movement there. Uh, natural gas above the nine level. So i uh, kind of glad it's not winter right now from the standpoint of natural gas, because I'd really prefer to not pay $9, uh, pay the $9 natural gas. So we have a lot of things going on. I just think what it boils down to, and the, the big question we all need to try and decipher is that, is this a bear market rally uh, or have we touched the bottom? And that's the question that I think every market participant needs to ask themselves in determining where they want to go with their trades and or investments. Yeah, even the Oracle of New Hampshire was speculating maybe he saw some signs that the warm was starting to turn out there in the broad market. This recent action was certainly back that up. I don't know. I'm still a little skeptical that we've seen all the fire and brimstone <laughs> in the market yet. I mean, the Fed hasn't really even started unloading its balance sheet. So wait till we start hitting that on the tape, let alone all the other fun. Hey, the monkey box. We had Simon on on our pro Q&A, Simon, the creator of Spike's on Tuesday, and he kept going on about monkeypox. Scared the hell out of me. So <laughs> monkeypox lurking out there as well. Let's see what's lurking out there from an overall options volume perspective. And we're putting up some numbers today, listeners, which uh, you might expect when you're kind of uh, rocking and rolling. VIX usually doesn't respond on a day like today when it's a strong up day. That means uh, green in the market, red in VIX. Usually doesn't translate to a ton of paper, but they're putting up some numbers today. Just ticked over 400K, 403,000 contracts to be precise. Uh, the ADV, 573,000 contracts. SPY, 3.9 million contracts. The ADV, seven and a quarter out there. SPX, 1.3 million contracts. The ADV, 2.12. So both SPY and the S looking robust. IWM, so small caps at 586,000. The ADV, 
837. By the way, you want to hear about more about small caps? Maybe you want to hear Uncle Mike uh, continue talking about things like crude oil and that gas and maybe metals. Stay tuned. He'll be joining me. If he can make the time, the start time, he'll be joining me in a little bit later for TWIFO today. So look forward to that. Uh, and then the Qs, the NASDAQ, 1.63 million contracts on the tape today. The ADV, still pretty much exactly 3 million, 3.0 million. Very rare that you see that. Let's go out to the most actives. Let's see what's lighting it up out there today. And a pretty robust day on the single names as well. Lately, when we've seen a lot of rock and roll on the macro, it hasn't always translated into a ton of single name options paper usually were to cost us 150,000 contracts only to break into the top 10. Today, we're at about a quarter of a million, 254 to be precise. That gets us to Snap. And man, what a what a saga Snap has been of late. Snap today 1465, up 50 cents or 3 and a half percent. That's actually looking pretty good because they they came for this one earlier this week, listen. This this one made Netflix look quaint. Well, maybe not that bad, but it was, it was pretty bad. This name is down on the week, 38% over nine handles. It got down as low as 1255, I believe. That was on Tuesday after before that trading, 22 and a half. It's high on the year was 8384 listeners. That was back in September of last year. And that, you know, I was just thinking about Snap because we were joking about Snap not too long ago on the network. We're like, wow, who the hell still uses Snap? We had kind of forgotten about it. And then they came and awakened all of us to the fact that, hey, we're still here because back on October 20th of last year, their stock took off. Here's all the headlines. Snap stock rockets up after a surprise earnings beat. It soared 22% in the after hours back in October of last year on surprise and unexpected profit, positive user growth, and revenue growth. So they were blowing the cover off the ball back in October. Fast forward a couple cycles. That's all. That's all we're talking about here. And now they come out, CEO you know, warning about dire earnings. They're going to miss targets for revenue and earnings in the quarter. And they just come for this thing like it is just nothing. It's it's amazing to see a lot of living packed into less than six months there in Snap. Hey, we're still here. We're crushing it. Hey, we're going to launch a fun little drone camera you could just throw in front of yourself and take a picture. Oh, wait, we can't make any money anymore. We're done. Uh, so, yeah. So a lot of living has been done. They were 83.34 last September, September 24th. My goodness. And then it just kind of fell off a cliff. So, yeah, it's been a weird saga for Snap. And good for 254,000 contracts today, though, in our number 10 spot. Uh, we could probably talk Snap for the rest of the show. Let's keep on rolling and see what else is in there. It's a day that ends in Y, so chances are Facebook's going to be in there. It's still hanging out at around 190 against up nearly seven handles today, though. So a good run for them. They had come for that of late. Coming into today, it was at 183, and it got as low as, let's see, 177 on Tuesday. So this one has a nice little rebound. 278,000 contracts for Facebook today. Number eight, this one's been kind of popping into our most actives a bit of late. This is Nikola. Good for 289,000 contracts today. This stock, 667, up 43 cents, or about nearly 7%. Let's see. Let's go back over the past year. Nicola got as high as 1952 on guess what day, listeners? Oh, June 8th. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I was talking about that day, actually, uh, with Matt on the advisor's option earlier. He hadn't heard my speculation on that date. So he uh, he was intrigued, to say the least. I think he's going to be looking at it. Here's another one here. I'm going to screenshot this one and send it off to the to the Russell folks for my research project on this very issue. <laughs> <laughs> because it is a uh, a fascinating little uh, sub segment of the market here. People have been asking us if this is still going on, and at least for Nikola, the answer is yes. Uh, Two hundred eighty nine thousand contracts for Nikola number eight, number seven. Let's go back to GameStop. Haven't hung out there in a while, listeners. It's a crazy place to be. You can go there. Maybe you buy some NFTs. You buy some digital currency for your game. Maybe you buy a used console. Who knows? One twenty six ninety five is where GameStop is hanging out today. Up. Nearly actually just ticked up 12 and a half handles or almost 11%. Wow. We've done a lot of living out here in GameStop just over the past week. It was 89 and 86 last Friday. Got up to as high as 142.68 and back down to 127. So, man, GameStop. Little mini meme stock palooza here <laughs> on fire. 351,000 contracts for number seven. Uh, number six, back to China. It's Baba. Good for 361,000 contracts, 94.33, up 
twelve dollars or fourteen point six percent. This one also having a nice little tier. It's trading eighty one forty one just on Wednesday today ninety four thirty three. So a nice pop for Baba. Is everything done? Everything over? Everything's fixed in China? I guess we'll find out. You know, if if, if game is trending, then uh, the ape king can't be far behind. That is AMC twelve ten right now, up nearly two percent or about twenty two cents. Let's see on the week. This one got as low as ten thirty six, trading twelve ten right now. So a nice little pop for them. Four hundred forty thousand contracts. And all of you out there who argue there is no symbol confusion, riddle me this. Number four right behind it, AMD. So AMC straight into AMD. Six hundred and fifty nine thousand contracts on the tape for AMD. AMD pretty much hanging out at its number four spot that it always does. So nothing surprising there. Good paper though, six fifty nine. It's up. Nearly seven handles or seven and a half percent today to ninety nine fifty eight. That's a good little run for AMD. They were as low this week as about looks like about so they got about ninety bucks. They bounced right off the ninety handle for rallying up nearly ten bucks to where they are right now. Uh, number three, you know, it's Nvidia. Good old Nvidia. Anything chips going to be number four and number three. That's what we got today. Nine hundred thirteen thousand contracts. That's a lot of paper for Nvidia. They're up a nine sixty eight or nearly six percent, trading right, right around one seventy nine and a half. On the week, it seemed like they got as low as 159 and a third. So they're pretty much up exactly 20 bucks from their low on Tuesday. So a nice little run for them. Good for 913,000 contracts. Number two, yes, I said number two, it's the old fruit company. 143.65, up about three, a little over three bucks, about two and a quarter percent today. Let's see, on the week, they got as low as 132.83. So they've rallied almost 11 bucks from their nadir on the week. So Good little run for them. Good for 1.1 million contracts. And it's all things Tesla today. Taking the top spot, 1.23 million. A Tesla up 51 handles, uh, to about seven and three quarters percent, trading over 700 again, 710 on the week. They got as low as looks like 623. So nice little rebound for them. Let's look really quickly, see if earnings are rebounding for us. Yeah, some names still popping off this week. Zoom on Monday, Best Buy. Into it and Nordstrom's on Tuesday. Most of the retailers kind of screwing the pooch these days. Best Buy following suit. Nordstrom, because they cater to a little bit more high end clientele, actually doing all right. Wednesday, we had Dick Sporting Goods. They're not doing that well either. And NVIDIA and Snowflake. I'd have to see how Snowflake's numbers turned out. Uh, Alibaba um, today, Macy's, Dollar Tree, and Dollar General. So this is known in earnings vernacular as Uncle Mike Day because of all the dollar names. Costco and Marvell. Tomorrow, we have Big Lots. And we have hot off the presses, listeners. We have earnings move and earnings move results reports from our friends over there at Orats. Let's start with what do you want? Let's start with Baba because why not? Again, this is hot off the hot off the presses, listeners. You can find it for yourselves. Theoptionsinsider.com. Baba before the bell today. They were at eighty-two thirty-one going into their announcement. They're pricing in seven point seven percent. They delivered 13.2%. So nearly a 2X, nearly a two-banger there on that straddle. So that's an impressive move. Macy's there before the bell today as well. 19 and a quarter is where they were trading. They're pricing in 12.4%. They delivered 15.2%. So a little bit of action, a little bit of juice out there in Macy's as well. Let's go out to Uncle Mike's favorite. Why not? Dollar Tree before the bell. 133.60 is where they were trading. That's pretty, pretty lofty for Dollar Tree. They were pricing in 10.8%. They delivered 17.4%. So Dollar Tree on the Ram page out here today. Wow, a lot of outperformance here in some of these. Let's go out to Baidu. I haven't talked about them in a long time. Picker symbol B-I-D-U. They were today before the bell as well. 119 and a third is where they were trading. They were pricing in 8.1%. They delivered 12.5%. So Outperformance is the name of the game today, listeners. Oh, let's go also. Let's go to Snowflake. Let's check in on them. They were yesterday after the bell. They were trading 132.77. They were pricing in nearly 16%, 15.9%. They delivered uh, wah, wah, 8.9%. So Snowflake, maybe the bloom coming off the rose. NVIDIA, same deal. 169 and three quarters is where they were trading. They popped off yesterday after the bell. They were, at the time, pricing in 9.5%. They delivered only 3.1%. I do believe that they expanded that frame of reference though to include some of today's movement yeah nvidia is up nearly six percent today so they're looking a little bit better still not nearly ten percent but a little bit better so it's not all outperformance listeners it's just mostly outperformance and then we got a whole bunch of earnings season updates the season right now coming in actually it's down to 83 percent. it was 88 percent on our last report this last week not looking good 81 percent. so outside of a couple of names i just mentioned we are seeing some underperformance 
You got all the new trades for you to look at as well, including straddles in GES and MOV and calendars in GPS and AEO, good old American Eagle. All right, let's keep on rolling, though. It's time to see what the Eye of Sauron has set in the crosshairs. It is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, let's get weird. Let's get wild. Let's get whimsical. It is time for the odd block. Let's start here. Let's go out to IMAX. Haven't been out here in a while. You know, IMAX, of course, the big screened movie company out there. Trading right now, ticker symbol appropriately enough, IMAX, I-M-A-X. But trading right around 16 bucks. It's had an interesting year. A year ago, it was trading 23 and a half bucks. And the high that it hit, listeners, oh, my goodness, another one. I got to screenshot another one here. <laughs> what day did it hit its high, listeners? Actually, technically, this one was June 9th, so I guess I guess we can't celebrate this one too much, but it's pretty dang close, so this is going in the folder as well. And where are we here? There we go. Oh, bam. All right. Bam. There we go. Just a little bit of research for all you who are asking me about the June 8th project. All right. So, yeah, it's high. Technically, listeners, on June... Actually, no, it was June 8th. 20, uh, no, it was June 9th. 23.57 on June 9th. So there you go. Then sold off pretty hard to 1367 on August 19th. Then it rallied again. Got up to not quite the June 8th high, though. Got up to 2185 on October. Then sold off again in January 1593. Then rallied again. This is a lot of volatility for IMAX. 2114. Uh, and then maybe they got caught up in some of that AMC movie theater meme volatility because they popped a few times over the course of the past year. Settling out where they are right now, 1597. Still off 26% on the year. And let's see what our Eye of Sauron found out here, listeners. Uh, We've got uh, puts, all kinds of puts, 5,000 of the June 15 puts going up for 55 cents. So pretty much lifting the offer. That's a 61 vol. They have earnings, but not in this cycle. So this is not even going through the next earnings, which are on the July 26th. This is just straight up. I'm spooked about IMAX. I want to buy some 15 puts right now, and I'm going to do it 5,000 times. Mr. Rock Lobster, A, have you heard of IMAX in Maine? Do you have this big screen technology? And B, we think about somebody scooping some puts. Um, we do have this big screen technology. I, I think there's one in Freeport, of all places, right by the uh, LL Bean uh, thing. So um, uh, I'm taking a look at these puts. Uh, I, you know, but I've never, I've never been to one actually. I hear they're, I hear they're kind of good, but that would require me to go out and like and, and look at something, which you know. I, I'm not, uh, I'm, and I actually, what I, I wouldn't mind seeing the new Tom Cruise uh, uh, Top Gun movie potentially there at uh, an IMAX theater. Do you wonder? Do you think they're playing in one of those? I have heard surprisingly good things about that. <laughs> so right. I am. I have to say, I was not intrigued at all outside of our playing the Danger Zone on Volatility Views every week. Uh, but so that kind of got me a little bit in the mood for it. But now I have to go back and watch Top Gun. I haven't seen that movie in about twenty years. Right. Well, I think that uh, you know that uh, Top Gun is. <laughs> it's uh, it's what's funny is I and then I saw some crazy thing online like what Kelly McGillis looks like. I guess his love interest on that movie. Now. I think I think but that Tom was uh, oh yeah th- th- yeah don't don't go there if you want to if you want to. <laughs> it was an interesting uh, yeah yes, yes but Tom Cruise somehow is hermetically sealed and. <laughs> yeah he's what just he probably like he's just been wrapped something? in bubble tape ever since yeah, that movie. like i don't know anyway again non sequitur um so interesting put purchase um so i'm not going to say these are line of the sand puts i have to say um no i think, I think they, bought, know, they bought these yeah 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 and and the theater and you know we know the theater business has been well let's just call it not the easiest business in the last couple of years uh to put it mildly uh, which, you know, I think I used to think that this company was a no brainer uh, as an investment. Um, and I started then I kind of like and I, it dropped off my radar because I thought, oh, yeah, they'll just put in all these really nice IMAX 
things and this could be a cool thing. Uh, and then, well, you know, this in this disease thing uh, happened. So I cooled to the idea on it, um, mostly because there just wasn't a lot of growth um, in the business. So I I punted this because uh, I believe we had an IMAX, I'm going to say like five years ago, which is probably the last time I had considered it. So it's not that the, the business is a, is bad, like the company makes money and stuff like that. Um, it's just the growth part is just not, you know, super enticing. So the question is, is why would you buy the 15 puts in June? I mean, you're not at the beginning of the pandemic. You're at the end of the pandemic. The stock is at all time low, you know, or, you know, re a relatively low price, except for the pandemic low was a single digit stock, like eight or nine bucks. So this is totally in my mind puzzling. I don't get this one at all. Um, as far as uh, performance or anything like that. Like I don't, this one is a, let's just call it a confusing one for me. I have to say, honestly, like, why do you, why do you buy these puts here? You know, markets kind of already made its move down. This is, it's definitely cycling kind of in the bottom of the range. So, I mean, unless there's going to be some massive surprise on earnings uh, and it's not even in an earnings cycle. Um, yeah. I, I, I just don't, I don't get it. So. Anyway, unless they're going to have some sort of big problems, you know, I would almost rather sell these puts at 55, 55 cents than buy them, to be quite honest. Yeah, I, I'm not liking these at all, which is why, <laughs> why they come in the odd block here, as I'm just messaging Mr. Oracle of New Hampshire that I found two more for the June 8th research project. So there we go. I'll let him sick his uh, ORATS machine on this as we keep on rolling. Let's go out. Speaking of uh, crazy names and apes and all that fun. Let's go out to AMC. Let's go back there. We were just talking about them in our most active listeners. AMC, we talked about this name back on the show not that long ago, May 12th. We profiled someone coming into the weeklies and doing kind of the trade we used to see a lot of, coming in and scooping up some weekly calls. This time it was the May 10 half calls expiring on the 13th. This was done on the 12th. So this is pretty much a one-day trade. So this was... This was meme stock palooza written all over it. Scooping calls in AMC with one day to go. What is this? January 2021. But uh, 2,745 of the May 10 half calls expiring on the 13th. They paid 31 cents for these. They lifted the offer. That was a 241 vol. Yeah, that has all the errors of an old school, uh, old school odd block <laughs> type of trade. Uh, the stock at the time... When we profiled this, let's see if I could type the ticker in, right? That would probably help. The stock at the time was $9.85. Let's see, where were we? Yeah, that was risk guy had good timing. He scooped right around the low, nine eighty five. dollars Dang, that was a good print. And this trade, as you might imagine, listeners, it worked out. The stock closed at nearly 12 bucks on expiration, $11.81. Uh, this guy took out took home three hundred eighty six thousand dollars on that twenty seven hundred and forty five lot. The total volume on that strike for the day was about fourteen thousand contracts. Now we can't assume it was a little bit of back and forth, so we can't assume all of it was some guy just straight up bought fourteen thousand. If they did, they would have pocketed oh about thirty six million. <laughs> that would have been a nice little trade, a good do as we used to say on the floor of the SIBO. But I think this person or people will still be happy with their $386,000. They're also, they were happy because the stock was up even more. It was up to 1221. So they made another 40 cents on the stock because obviously these were still open. So they got the stock. The stock has come off a little bit now still, but still 12 bucks. So they're still up on this trade. So Mr. Rock Lobster sounds like somebody uh, making some money scooping weekly calls in AMC. What is this? 2021 again, sir? Are the apes back? I guess are, they're making are, money, are, are so I they, guess they're back. <laughs> What's amazing is, okay, so they're buying calls in AMC, again, like why? But they're buying puts. What, are they buying puts to hedge in IMAX? Don't you find, uh, now, uh, clearly they're two totally different stocks, um, but, they, but they're certainly in the same business. So I have to say, just from a head-scratching point of view for the odd block, this is pretty head-scratching. They're buying, you know, they're buying the AMC calls, which, you know, again, it's trading at a 200 vol, so anything can still happen in that stock. Uh, 
And then they go by the low ball puts X. <laughs> Not the same person, most likely, but I, I just a head scratcher. But I think uh, <clears throat> the the AMC guy certainly made some pretty decent money on that trade. No question about that. Not bad. Yes, not bad at all. That's beyond your significant other's Ferrari metrics, sir. So uh, yes, well, yes, well yes. done, well done to him. And you know what? We're kind of coming up against it, so maybe we'll save these puts and sticks. I want to get into a little bit of the old mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the mail block, the portion of the show where you guys ask us questions. We often turn the spotlight back on you folks like we have done this week, it's getting Vol Twit all in a Twitter, our question of the week this week. We're asking you, you know, something we were debating on Vol Views on the stage last week. Do you need a Vol Spike to really signal a bottom in this market? And so we put that to you. We said, do you need a really a spike in VIX to really, to really mark the concession in the broad market? And if so, what level does VIX have to hit to mark that concession? We gave you four choices, VIX north of 40. VIX north of 50, VIX north of 60, and VIX north of 70. Mr. Uncle Mike, we shall start with you. First off, what is your take on this? Are you a believer in that theory that we need vol to really spike before we can truly kind of say the worst is behind us, or do you not agree with that? And then uh, regardless, if you have a vote, have at it, and B, what do you think our audience is voting for, sir? I think the audience is saying it needs to go above 40, and I personally do not believe that we need a vol spike for it to be at the bottom. I, and the reason is, is that every time I turn on any financial news media, everyone's saying, oh, we need to have a fallout before we can say we're at bottom. But the reality of this is, is that we've had elevated VIX for quite a while now. now I know we've kind of gone down to the 20 level a few times. We got back into the the teens a year ago for a while, but we've had a high VIX for a while. And so I'm not convinced that we need the vol spike that uh, everyone's talking about. So no, I'm not in that camp, but I believe the audience disagrees with me. And I think the audience is saying we need to go above 40. Interesting. Mr. Rocklops, the same question for you. Are you in that camp or do you, uh, do you politely disagree? And then B, what do you think our audience is voting for? And if you have a vote, have at it. Uh, no, I, I don't think, well, you know, the thing is, I think there's a lot of, I think a lot of the poll respondents are, you know, newer traders, maybe this last, like, you know, and I mean, like since 2020 new, um, and they have been programmed to the market goes up on a VIX, you know, the market drops. 2020, try like January, 2022 new. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've been uh, trading you know, since 2020, you're like an old hand now. You're like an old hand, yes. And then I go, I think 30 years, I'm like, oh, my God, you know. <laughs> um, uh, and what's funny is, you know, everybody was worried about oil going to 125 in 1990, right? So that was 30 years, 31 years ago. Uh, oil, same price um, at the pump. Uh, so clearly, uh, oil has slipped relative to inflation from the bad old uh, Gulf War days. I paid but, $5 in downtown Chicago for the first time ever, uh, over 506, I believe. Well, it's like our, you know, our like our farmers. Like I think, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blah on about the green revolution yet. But um, they're they're getting what they want, right? So higher oil prices, maybe people are gonna try to find alternatives. So they got what they want that way. Um, but as far as uh, this goes, yeah, I don't think you because you can have a bear market with just higher vol. It's just you know, just you can have a bear market. Things are kind of stinky and, you know, vols in the 20s, which is still like one and a half to one percent a day moves in the spy. They're just all down. Um, so I, I don't think you need to have that for a bear market. And I think to be quite honest, we got a low, you know, we had a low in uh, SPX last week, but we didn't get anywhere near a high in VIX. Um, so there just wasn't a lot there. There wasn't that, um, you know, the immediate worry going down to like 3,200 or something like that, just, just never materialized. So, um, and I, and I think part of that is because there is a part of the market that's kind of holding stocks up, you know? Um, so mostly it's been kind of a tech wreck. 
Um, and a lot of tech stocks are down like 60, 70 percent. You know, the big four are down, what, 30 to 40 percent from their top. Um, so those indexes have gotten kind of smacked already. Um, so anyway, that's where I think it is. So I know I don't think we need. Uh, I think I think uh, overall the audience would say, yes, we need to go over 40, but I don't think we do. So you are demurring as well there. Interesting. Well, let's see what our audience has in store for us. And right now, not a huge spike in VIX, just a bit of a pop. North of 40 is winning with 43.2%, uh, followed by number two, north of 50 with 25.2%. A lot of people we've had in the network over the last couple of days when I've been polling them have come in around that north of 50 level. They are believers in this theory. A number three, we have north of 70. So the hardcores, that's, that would be your buddy, from Volviews last week on the stage with us from uh, from Money Morning Live there. He wants a VIX north of 80 again. Uh, so that crowd, the north of 70, 21.9%. And no love for north of 60. It's only 9.7%. That's always kind of been the laggard in our poll. Do you have thoughts on this, listeners? A lot of people are going back and forth. We've had a lot of replies on this as well. People are weighing in all over the place. Uh, a bunch of people chiming in. So if you have thoughts on this, listeners, get on over to at options. Make your voice heard. We will discuss the final results and give our final thoughts on that tomorrow let's see what else we have going on here this week uh let's go here to elon elon maybe uh mr musk tweeting in <laughs> he is asking about crypto he says uh, has bitto options volume stayed firm during the recent sell-off or has it crashed like everything else well good question mr elon let's go find out for ourselves you know i've been bandying about this number of about sixty thousand adv in bitto and man, have I been off? I just pulled the numbers right now for you here, Alon. And yeah, Bitto options are are soaring, which kind of puts the lie to the fact that it's only call action. That I mean, it was very call heavy from a skew perspective and from a volume perspective for a long time. Uh, but this sell off has kicked the puts into higher gear out here right now in Bitto. I'm looking at the numbers right now, and ADV right now is. 96,000, so almost 100,000 contracts a day going up in Bitto right now. Of that, 71,000 are puts, 26,000 are calls. So that'll give you some sense of where we stand right now. It's It's gone up from roughly 60,000 to close to 100,000. So people are coming to play in Bitto. I also looked here from a historical perspective, and we're looking right now from an open interest perspective right now. There are 400 and 52,000 put options open on Bitto right now. That's at the 98th percentile. So that's pretty much as high as it's ever been. And there's only 266,000 call options open right now. So interestingly enough, you've been listening to the Crypto Rundown. You know out there on places like Darabit and others, it's still pretty much two to one calls over puts from an OI perspective. But on Bitto, which is a, I think a lot of that's longer term paper that's been kind of around for a while. It, Bitto is obviously a much newer product, doesn't have a lot of that kind of long-term crazy paper. So from that perspective, people trading right now, they're all about the puts, and that's kind of interesting. So the call open interest is only at the 53rd percentile. So a lot of puts open out there right now in Bitto land. If you're wondering, the vol in Bitto 75.6, that's about 56th percentile, so kind of pretty much halfway to, uh, to the crazy town. So yeah, that's that's very interesting. So much puts. That's kind of a little bit different than what we're seeing on Deribit. And again, different audience. People here in the U.S. can trade Bitto as well. So that makes it uh, very interesting. So great question there. Who was that? Elon. Yeah, a lot of puts. I've been saying for a while, we need a protracted sell-off to really kind of kick those puts into higher gear. And at least when it comes to Bitto, it seems like we are starting to see that come to pass as we keep on rolling right on into the Around the Block segment. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. Let's do it. Let's go around the horn now, see what everyone's keeping an eye on until the next time we gather here together on Monday, or in the case of the Uncleist of Mike's, until we gather here together in a few minutes. Actually, I take that back. Monday, it is the Memorial Day weekend, so we will not be gathering here together on Monday. So it'll be a whole week which is an eternity in the world of options. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what are you keeping an eye on until the next time we can gather here together, sir? Well, I think the 4,100 level is the main thing I'm keeping an eye on right now in the SPX. I think that's big. Uh, we have some headline risk, but um, just with uh, 
earnings season upon us. Just continuing to watch that, seeing if there's any surprises or anything that spooks anything. But uh, for the most part, uh, 4,100 is where my focus is right now. Till tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, too. Just two guys talking here. Just me and you. Nobody else. You're looking at this market right now. And I know you're a permable, so it's kind of hard for you to distance yourself from that. But looking at this market, are you feeling bottom? You feeling this is the turnaround? Or are you feeling there's more more dark side to come? What is your heart of hearts telling you? Oh, my heart of hearts. I mean, it, for the aggressive strategy with which I do, I, I really can't buy a lot right now. I mean, I have my hands are kind of tied because of my rules, which I stand by. Rules have to have to um, uh, always over over have to trump um, sentiment. But right now, my heart of hearts is telling me that I I, I think that we my heart of hearts which is wrong 50% of the time. So I'll give you my 50% guarantee is that we hit bottom on Friday uh, at roughly two o'clock right before the buy-in. Well, there we go. <laughs> the Uncle Mike guarantee. <laughs> if you want more of the Uncle Mike guarantee, stay tuned. We'll have more for us in a little bit. Mr. Rock Lops, your same question for you. What are you keeping an eye on for now a full week, sir? I know it's a, um, we have, it's, this is, it's exciting to be back, uh, to be back in Maine. I, it's, uh, no, does anybody ever actually say that? It's exciting to be back in Maine. I was just going to say, that might but, be the first time those words have been uttered, sir. Right. So this market is exciting. And what I will, I will, I am, I am actually, I'm moving two saws away on this a little bit. So, you know, the thing that I see that's most impressive is that like the, the VIX shellacking of, of juice is pretty substantial. Now, granted, you know, there was a lot of sour milk from, uh, or sour grapes from last week, you know, we, that sell off, we were looking at what, 3,800. We're like, woohoo you know, and then it all stopped. So, and the, and the fed, you know, tip their hand as usual a little bit, you know, they talk tough and then they do it back. So I, I, I could see us pulling back, but I, I think we would need to have a uh, new uh, and relatively catastrophic news for a low at this point for, for new lows. So I will say it with the, the, the Tucson guarantee uh, of 50%, but I think we would need, Something has to come out of left field for us to make new lows, I believe, right now. Just just reading how vol is trading. So I'm going with uh, my nose on this, which um, vol is generally a very good signal uh, because people vote with their dollars. And right now, they're not voting with their dollars on stocks going down a whole bunch more. All right, everybody, you heard it here. Now it's time to wind down this portion of our options extravaganza today but don't worry got more coming at you in a little bit if you're listening live have a beverage hit the restroom we'll be back in a little bit with the one and only uncle mike to break down the mad wild world of futures options but before we do that mr uncle mike sir if folks want to reach out to you check out some of your own content where should they go what should they do a couple places. Check me out on YouTube. Type in St. Charles Wealth Management. Got a lot of videos on there. Um, if you're looking for a financial advisor, check out my website, stcharleswealth.com to get in contact with me. I'm an advisor that actually does delve in the option product if it's appropriate for the client. And you can follow me on Twitter for more content as well, at Mike Tusaw, T-O-S-A-W. And Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you, sir. Where should folks go if they want to learn more? Uh, go to optionpit.com uh, forward slash mentoring uh, or call Ted 888-TRADE-01. If you, if you like what we do here on this show, uh, we do more of it at Option Pit every day live, every single day. So call you got to call Ted 888-TRADE-01. Claim your 10% off any Option Pit product just because you listen to this here show. I didn't meet Ted at the live event. I was looking forward to meet Ted so I could oh, tell him oh man, that's a bummer. Tell him once and for all <laughs> who the sexiest man in options. So all these people who are lying to him, I could correct him to his face. But alas, I did not get that chance. You can do it for yourself. Tell Ted who the sexiest man in option is over there in the land of the pit. And we got to get on out of here. Of course, if you're listening after the fact, pit next. Hopefully, Twyfo will be there waiting for you. If listening live, it'll be in your ear holes. In a wee little bit, back again tomorrow, volatility views after that, and then, of course, options oddities. No shows on Monday. Don't blame me. It's market holiday. Back again next Thursday, another episode of the Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. 
For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.